Hello, everybody. Uh, I wanted to make a quick video to show you guys um, how we can use Trello uh, to actually run Scrum ceremonies and to organize work that we're going to plan out using Scrum. Now, when we talk about the project that we have for this course, a little bit different than what we would normally do in Scrum. I would not use a application like Trello. It is more of a Kanban type of tool, uh, to be honest. It's not um, as robust, but there are teams for small projects that uh, use this for Scrum, and it's easy enough to give everybody access to it. It's free, um, and we can track the work the same way. We can assign uh, user stories the same way that you would using a, a, an enterprise level uh, agile tool. Okay, um, so I figured this was an easy way to do it and give you guys some exposure to Scrum. So uh, we're going to give it a shot. We can export this to CSV later on and add that to Microsoft Teams if we want to make Gantt charts, if we want to track the project that way. But if you think about what everybody knows about product management or project management from the beginning, is that you have a scope, right? Your scope of work is all of the activities that need to be done and in a time box. So the thing that's a little bit different about Scrum is that the time box is set in two week intervals or one week intervals depending on how quickly the team wants to have the ceremonies and, and make those those intervals happen. They're, they're re really called iterations, okay? Iteration's a key word here because you're iterating on a product and developing it as you go. The idea is to, at the end of every itera iteration, have a, uh, a shippable product of some sort, uh, some level of maturity, right? It might not be everything that the customer wanted, but it delivers value in some way parts of the tool are complete and can be used. Um, and the other stuff that's not complete, it uh, it continues to be developed as we go forward, adding more and more value until eventually all of the value is there. Um, so that's the way Agile works. That's the way the Agile Manifesto prescribes that we develop software, et cetera. Then this is kind of what I do for a living. I'm a product manager um, and a product owner for a Scrum team. So very familiar with how all of these things work. That said, let's take a look at the four different swim lanes here. We've got the product backlog. Um, this is pretty key. We're gonna put in there the kitchen sink, every single thing that the tool that we're developing uh, should have, right? And we prioritize that product backlog on what's most important now, what's important two weeks from now, what's important tomorrow. And those are the things that we're gonna do first. Uh, we have ceremonies to do all of that stuff, but not really a ceremony to define the stories. So as we identify them, uh, we want to add them into this product backlog. Right now, I only have one in there. It's team access, and that's just getting everybody into this board and getting everybody uh, into a chat system like MS Teams, where everybody can just uh, collaborate really quickly. And there's an iPhone app and an Android app, so we can get notified immediately when somebody has a question or concern or whatever. Um, we're still working on that one. Uh, the other stuff that I sent out is really not necessary for you guys to sign up for it. But if we have a ceremony, as an example, that's the tool that's going to be used. And you just go to the link to get to it when we want to size some of the backlog items here that we're going to define. So team access right now, if we take a look at it, it has no size, right? Um, but that's because we did not groom the story. Um, so in this case, we want to give it a size. And if you saw the other video that I put out, uh, you know, scrum in five minutes there, um, the size is based on 1, 3, 5, 8, 13, Fibonacci sequence, level of effort number, okay? So for this case, I mean, we want to basically give it some kind of a label. We can label this a, uh, a 1. It's not very difficult for me uh, or anybody who's executing this. What happened to my 1 there? Create new label. 1, yellow. Okay, so this is a 1-point story. Um, we've now sized it. Normally, I wouldn't do that. Everybody would vote on the size, and then we would put the size, uh, the average there. Um, and if we do a, a backlog grooming, I could show you guys how to do that. Not a big deal. But back here in the backlog, we, this size, this story is now ready. Okay, it has a size, and it's been defined. Uh, key thing about the definition here, the as a, I want to, so that, and the definition of done. So this activity, rather than just putting this on some Gantt chart and then having to figure out what it is, we know exactly what needs to be done for this story, okay? Uh, I want to make sure the team has access to what they need so that they can collaborate, work, and attend ceremonies. Uh, done is when access to the tools is confirmed for the team. 
And then we have references and artifacts. So references are like, you know, if you have an email or, you know, something else, some other, something that somebody needs to look at, a document. Uh, I got several references uh, that we'll use for this project because I've done all of this in Excel for many years. Um, we're going to use those Excel things to work through the project and just kind of replace some of the manual effort with a Power App, okay, which will then tie back in to uh, the actual Excel file anyway, okay? So the artifact, an artifact is basically anything that is a byproduct or a document or another story. It is a, uh, a non-deliverable, okay, that's associated with the work. So, and if there are any artifacts, then we would list them there. Now, to move this uh, item from the product backlog into the sprint backlog is what you would normally do if you're sprint planning. But in this case, we don't have any sprint planning, so I'm just gonna move it so you can show you guys. So right now we want a suggested sprint backlog, okay? So I've moved it, now that's in the sprint backlog. So we're, we're basically acting as though we're planning the sprint. Now let's say the sprint began today and we have until next Wednesday, and that's when the sprint will end. The idea is to assign everybody uh, an item from the sprint backlog and away they go, okay? Once they start work on it, then we would move that same team access thing into in progress. Okay, so we're moving it along the chain. Now at any point in time, you can see this is a super simple explanation because um, we only had one item in the product backlog. This other one here is just a template I created so that way it has some of the stuff already in it. The as a I want to makes it easier. We don't have to retype that every time. We just give this a template. We know the label is a user story. Then we can size it when everybody understands and can vote on it. And then uh, it would be created as a new user story. And then we would move that into the sprint backlog when we're ready to plan the sprint. Um, so what we need to do at this point is we're going to be adding cards. So when we want to add a title for the card. We could say user story. We can even give it a number, you know, like 001. And then we could say, I want to... Um, demo power apps, right? So if I wanted to show you guys a demo of power apps, okay, so now we can actually put in here, okay, so as a user, So that the team knows what it is. Okay, done's when the demo is complete. And I want to label this a user story. We're going to say, let's say that we did size it. And let's just say that this is a two point story. Okay, two point story. Good. Now, here's the key to this we would say the product backlog is there. Good. Now, what we have is we, we can take a look at the product backlog overall, and we can figure out by totaling up all of the points um, how much work we have to do. Um, in the sprint backlog, we're going to fill that up with the team's capacity. So if we have four people on the team, everybody thinks they can complete two, two points worth of work in the sprint, then we would end up having uh, eight points in that sprint backlog. That measurement, that eight points, is what's referred to as the team's velocity. So the velocity is the measurement of points that you can complete in one sprint. And of course, we move those in as they go into progress. We accept them when they are complete. Um, and so in the board here, we have completed and accepted. So completed might mean that you know, you're done with the work, but no one else has seen it. Or it might mean that you're done with the work, but no one has tested it. So if no one has seen it and no one has tested it, then can we really accept that story as a team? Not really. So what we need to do normally as a part of the tasks associated with each thing is that we will show the team or somebody else will test it out and, and confirm that it's working for them. Um, so that's when it moves to accepted. Now, the idea here is in every sprint, we want to get as many accepted points as possible. Um, so just a 